Even small expenses can add up to quite a bit over the course of a year, and you can use Excel to calculate exactly how much you're spending on these items. So here I have a table where I'm going to put item name and the cost per unit, how many I buy, and how often I buy them, and then we'll get the annual quantity and cost. For this cell, I'd like a drop-down list, and on another sheet here called Lists, I have time units, and then how many units there are per year. So how many days, 365 per year, and weeks, and so on. What we don't know that might be variable for each person is how many work days. And to calculate that, we need to know how many weeks you work. So instead of 52, maybe you have two weeks vacation, so you actually work 50 weeks in the year. Each week, your regular shift is five days or four, so you're going to put how many days you work each week, and I'll put a five there. And to calculate the number of work days per year, I'll use a simple formula, which is equals the number of days per week times the number of work weeks per year. Press enter, so you have 250 work days per year in this case. We have these lists, time unit, and then the numbers associated. And I'm going to name these groups of cells. So starting with this time unit, I'll start with daily and select down to quarterly. And I'm going to name these cells. To do that, I'll click in the name box and type a one word name. And for this, I'll call it time units and then press enter. In this column, I'm going to do the same thing. Select those cells where the numbers are click in the name box, and I'll call this time annual. Press enter. And now we have two named ranges, and then we can refer to those names in our formulas later. Going back to the cost per year sheet, I would like the drop down here using the time units list. So I'll select all the cells where I want the drop down, and on the data tab of the ribbon, click data validation. On the settings tab, I don't want to allow any value in the cell. I want a list. And for the source, I'll click in this source box, press the F3 key on the keyboard, and that opens up a list of names in this workbook. So I'll select time units and click OK. Click OK. And so now in each cell here, you can see a drop down. For this, I'm going to have one coffee each work day. Now we want to get the number from that lookup table. So I need to know how many work days there are in a year. For this, I'll use an index function. To start, I'll type equals index and an open bracket. Now I want it to get a number from that list of units per year. So again, I'll press F3, click time annual, that's where the numbers are, and click OK. So it'll get a number from that list, type a comma, and it has to know which row. And for that, we're going to use the match function, match, open bracket. For this, the lookup value is the time unit that was selected. So I'll click on the time unit cell in this row, and it puts in the field name because this is a named Excel table. Where it should look for that value is in that list of time units. Again, I'll press F3. There's the time units. OK, another comma, and I want an exact match. If it doesn't find whatever was entered as a time unit, it shouldn't come back with a number. So exact match, double click on that, close the match function, and a bracket to close the index function, and press enter. So it's given me a result in the first row, but errors where there is no time unit to look up. And to fix that, I'm going to use the if error function. I'll click right after that equal sign, type if error, open bracket, I'll click at the end here, comma, it should just give me a zero. Close the bracket and press enter. The last thing we're going to do to this formula is multiply that looked up number by the quantity. So clicking at the end of this formula, type a multiplier and click on the quantity cell and press enter. So it's showing 250 now because I'm buying one each workday. If I change that to two, it would double that to 500. For the annual cost, we just have to multiply this quantity by the cost per unit. So equals this times the cost and press enter. And for a grand total, if we're putting lots of items in here, click in this cell equals sum, open bracket, 
from the cells that we want the total for. And because it's a named table, it automatically finds the field name for us and the table name. Close the bracket and press enter. So our cost right now for the items we've entered is $2,500. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.